Dear students, in this class, we are going to see the radiation from a quarter wave monopole. Along with this, we are going to see the power radiated by this quarter wave monopole and its radiation resistance. We are going to prove that the radiation resistance of a quarter wave monopole is 36.5 ohms. So, in order to get all these results, let me explain very clearly using this figure. So, this is a dipole, this is a dipole of length L is equal to 2H. Actually, it is a dipole which is at the center fed dipole. So, you are feeding this dipole at the center. And as it is an off fed dipole, its length L is equal to lambda by 2. So, if the length L is equal to lambda by 2, I can say it is an off fed dipole. The length is off wave. So, if you take this length L is equal to half of it, that means lambda by 4, it is a quarter wave monopole. So, if you take this figure, this is lambda by 4 and this is lambda by 4. I am taking only one lambda by 4, upper portion of it. And I am not taking the image of it. That means, I am erecting lambda by 4 antenna on the surface of this conducting plane. So, what is this? This is a perfect conducting plane. Perfect conducting plane. So, what is the perfect conducting plane? It is nothing but the earth. So, on the earth, I am installing only lambda by 4 antenna. And of course, as per the image theory, it is lambda by 4 will be appeared as an image on the other side. Now, I am taking only lambda by 4 antenna. And in order to get the radiation from all these bigger antennas, larger antennas, definitely you have to assume a suitable current distribution for this. So, what are the different types of current distributions in antennas? The very first one is constant current distribution. Where we have assumed this in the case of alternating current element, the smallest current element, which is nothing but a Hergian dipole, where we have assumed only the constant current distribution. And for the short dipole and short monopole, we have to assume the triangular current distribution triangular current distribution, but whereas for the half wave dipole and the quarter wave monopole, we are assuming sinusoidal current distribution. If you assume the sinusoidal current distribution, then you are going to get the accurate results of this half wave dipole as well as quarter wave monopole. Now, let me explain the radiation from the quarter wave monopole, then I can extend this discussion to the half wave dipole. So, the very first point is, you have to remember for larger antennas, suitable current distribution is very much required. So, if you see this procedure for getting these fields, first of all, you have to assume the current distribution. What type of current distribution I am assuming? Sinusoidal current distribution. Sinusoidal means, what does it mean? If you take this figure, in the upper portion, the current I is nothing but I m sin beta of H minus Z. What is this Z? I am placing this quarter wave monopole in Z direction. This is in the, in the Z axis. So, that is the reason I am sin beta of H minus Z for Z greater than 0. That means for positive values of Z. So, this is existing for Z greater than 0. And I am sin beta of H plus Z is for the lower portion. It is for Z less than 0. So, these are the current distributions we are having here. So, whatever the distribution you are seeing in this figure, this is a sinusoidal current distribution. So, once the current distribution is actually given to you, sinusoidal, then definitely you can estimate the magnetic potential. How to estimate the magnetic potential? There are two approaches I already told you in the last classes. You are having heuristic approach as well as Maxwell's approach. So, write down this magnetic potential first using those approaches. So, in this figure, if you see it clearly, this is the smallest element dz, which is at a distance z from this center of this dipole, center of this quarter wave monopole, or otherwise from the surface of the earth, it is at z. Now, I want to calculate what are the fields of this antenna at a far distance c here, small r as well as capital R. So, if you are taking this, it is making an angle theta. This is r is making an angle theta. So, both are not equal. For far distances also, they may be looking parallel, but always there is a small difference here. That small difference is nothing but this is the difference we are having. What is this difference? This is dz cos theta. So, this is the difference. 
z cos theta so that's why if i want to equate this to then what is r r is equal to small r minus this piece what is this piece z cos theta then both are equal here so r and capital r is nothing but the distances from this element to the far points here of course the minute distances are there whenever the minute distance is there naturally you can explain you can expect the phase difference so whenever you are sending the signal from this antenna to this it is a distance r and this is at the distance r small r then what may be the difference at this point at this point the information may be same the amplitudes may be same but they are having a phase difference that phase difference we are going to get in terms of exponential factors so first of all you assume the constant current distribution that is sorry you assume the sinusoidal current distribution now i would like to write even here i is equal to i m sin beta of h minus z h minus z for z greater than 0 and this is equal to i m sin beta of h plus z for this lower portion what is the lower portion z less than 0 this is the first assumption you have to do this this is the thing you have to take this now using your heuristic or maxwell's approach write down your magnetic potential what is the magnetic potential the magnetic potential is always in which direction z direction that's why i can write down here az is equal to frankly speaking it is for the smallest current element i am just writing here that's why for a smallest current element i can write down the smallest vector magnetic potential so that's why daz is equal to mu i divided by 4 pi r 4 pi capital r into e to the power of minus j beta r into dz this is already known equation so here you see your magnetic potential is a function of your current and inversely proportional to distance all these things are already known to you then you are also having this extra factor e to the power of minus j beta r what is this this is because of the phase difference because of the phase difference now in this equation i would like to write down daz is equal to daz is equal to here you can say mu by 4 pi mu by 4 pi is constant it is constant here and you can say that what is i here i is splitting into i is splitting into two components for z greater than 0 and z less than 0 so i can say that here this length or length i can say that it is from minus h to 0 and from 0 to plus h because you are having two components here one is i m sin beta of h minus z i m sin beta of h plus z so now i can split this into two components what is i i is equal to i m sin beta of h plus z it is from minus h to 0 it is h plus z h plus z here into u to the power of minus j beta r plus one more component here that is i is i m sin beta of h minus z into e to the power of minus j beta r minus j beta r but you see here it is i i have split it into this then it will be into dz that is called dz you can say that this is dz and one more thing is you are also having this is dz so this is the expression i am writing here so out of this i can calculate and i can simplify like this im is nothing but the maximum current so that is also a constant so mu im by 4 pi i can take it by divided by r is also there so this is divided by 4 pi r capital r and here also you are having capital r like this so finally what you can say then if i want az here az means magnetic potential due to the all elements only for smallest element i am telling that daz if i want the total current total then definitely have to integrate this expression because integration is always giving the total summation of the contribution of the smallest current elements here so how to write down here az is equal to then i can say az is equal to what are the constant here mu im by 4 pi 
mu i m divided by 4 pi into you can say integration of sin beta of integral sin beta of h plus z into u to the power of minus j beta r into dz plus one more thing is integration of you can say sin beta of h minus z into e to the power of minus j beta r into dz into dz and one more thing is you are having this is divided by capital R and it is also divided by capital R here. So this is the expression. So what are the integrating limits here? The first integration should be from minus h to 0 the lower portion this is minus h to 0 and this is from 0 to h. So once you know this expression, happily you can do your derivation here. But only one thing is, just to simplify this, I would like to tell you, what is the difference between R and R? R is the distance and R is much small, more than this R. So you can say that the derivation is R is equal to R minus Z into cos theta. Both are almost equal. For far away points, I can say, R is approximately equal to R. But one difference may exist here, that is the phase difference. So in this one, I can say, in the numerator, I can say, R is approximately equal to R. So in the numerator, I can say that this R is approximately equal to R. And it is also approximately equal to R. But whereas in the case of the numerator, R should be not equal to small r. It is always having a phase reference. That's why you have to substitute this. Then you can say that, az is equal to mu i m divided by 4 pi mu i m divided by 4 pi integral minus h to 0 sin beta of h plus z into what is this e to the power of minus j beta r you can say minus j beta into in the place of r you have to write down r minus z cos theta r minus z cos theta into dz plus integral 0 to h sin beta of h minus z into e to the power of minus j beta into r minus z cos theta into dz. So this is the thing you have to write down here. Now in the next step very simply you can say e to the power of minus j beta r you can take it as a common. You can take it as a common e to the power of minus j beta r. So then you can write down here e to the power of minus j beta r into e to the power of z cos theta. You can write down. So that's why I can write down here finally az is equal to az is equal to mu i m divided by. So here you are, you are forgetting this. It is a small r and it is also here it is a small r. Small r also take out from this. So mu i m by 4 pi small r into integral and one more thing I can take it is common e to the power of minus j beta small r so I can take it is e to the power of minus j beta small r then very simple sin beta of h plus z h plus z into e to the power of minus in this is minus minus into minus plus so e to the power of j beta z cos theta plus this is an integration, I can say integral minus h to 0, this is into dz plus, same thing you can write an integral 0 to h sin beta of h minus z divided by small r into e to the power of j beta z cos theta, j beta z cos theta into dz. So this is the final expression you got it. Now I want to say what is this sin beta of h plus z. I want to expand this sin a plus b sin a cos b plus cos a sin b. So now we will continue. So in this expression we are having sin beta of h plus z sin beta of h minus z. So for the particular case of this h what is this h? h is nothing but the height from this ground this h is. So for quarter by monopole, h is equal to lambda by 2. So for the particular case, if you take h is equal to lambda by 4, 
then you can write down sin beta of h plus z is equal to sin beta of h minus z is equal to cos beta z. So how you got it? Because you know sin of a plus b. So sin a cos b. Suppose for example this one if you take it sin a sin beta h cos b sin a cos b cos beta z plus cos a sin b. What is cos a? Cos beta h cos beta h plus cos beta h and you can say sin beta z sin beta z cos beta h and sin beta z and what is beta here beta h i am calculating here what is beta h beta is 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda divided into h means lambda by 4 you have taken so it will be only pi by 2 this is pi by 2 so beta h is equal to pi by 2 so in this expression you can write down what is cos pi by 2 0 sin pi by 2 is 1. So what is remaining here? Cos beta z. Exactly. This also is the same case. If you have a trigonometric expansion and if you substitute h is equal to lambda by 4. So in the place of sin beta of h plus z and sin beta of h minus z, you can substitute cos beta z here. So what is the expression then? Therefore, az is equal to, I can say az is equal to, your magnetic potential az is equal to, same constant mu i m into e to the power of minus j beta r divided by 4 pi r, 4 pi r into. So I can write down this is minus h to 0 and 0 to h. I want to convert the limits here. So I want to reverse the limits. Then you can write down here e to the power of minus j beta z cos theta. So I can write down sin beta of h plus z means cos beta z into e to the power of e to the power of j beta z cos theta e to the cos theta plus cos beta z into cos beta z into you can say e to the power of minus sin e to the power of minus j beta z cos theta into dz. So you have to integrate this. How to integrate? Integral from 0 to h. This also from integration of 0 to h. So this is the expression you got it. Now very simple, if you are taking the expansion of e to the power of j beta z cos theta, e to the power of j beta z cos theta, that means e to the power of j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta, you know this, j sin theta. Just you do it for the first integration, you can understand what exactly it is. So e to the power of j theta, you can say that az is equal to, az is equal to mu i m into e to the power of minus j beta r divided by 4 pi r every step I am doing for your convenience. So into, so integral 0 to h cos beta z, this is cos beta z, cos beta z. What is this e to the power of j beta z cos theta? So I am taking this e to the power of this thing into totally common. So e to the power of j beta z means you can say that cos beta cos theta plus j sin theta cos of beta z cos theta beta, beta z cos theta plus j sin theta j sin of beta z cos theta beta z cos theta okay plus what is this one what is cos beta z cos beta z i am taking the common here this is so you can say that it is the power of cos plus cos beta z cos theta cos of beta z cos theta minus j sin beta sin of beta z cos theta. So see here friends, it is plus j sin is the, it is minus j, it will be gone into dz, this is the dz. So finally, we can simplify this.